Here we are, November 22nd, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'm just about to jump on a flight to Bermuda, go meet up with Shannon Falcona and his team, and learn a little something about offshore foiling. Let the adventure begin. Here we are, a day later, home of the 2017 America's Cup, going down this coming spring where Jimmy Spithill, Team Oracle, going to defend the cup. And there she is, a black carbon mast, a lot of rake, you can tell she's high performance. She's dead giveaway, the hold the Falcon. A new boat, one of a kind, built for offshore foiling. Oh, she's a beauty. Basically, these guys just sailed from New York City to Bermuda. You know, first half of their trip was smooth and then they hit super heavy weather, like 30, 40 knot winds up to like 10 meter seas. And it was rough. So we're hoping for a little smoother trip headed down to Antigua. All in will be about a thousand miles. Shannon. Yo. Dude, thank you for having me out. Glad you made it. Shannon Falcone. You ready? Yeah. I've known Shannon since America's Cup in San Francisco. I think he's done like five cup campaigns. He's won two America's Cups. He's done a Volvo Ocean race, a bunch of offshore deliveries. He's raced and sailed his whole life. He's kind of a wealth of knowledge and a specialist into foiling sailing. I think I'm ready. I don't know. All right, time to unleash the beast. This is a huge force now. Taking off from Bermuda, swing by, set it up to Spit Hill and the Oracle Boys. Let's see how the program's going insane. Just testing out the new boat. We head down to Antigua. Life is good. And this one is for all the marbles. The 34th America's Cup will go to the winner of this race. Team USA makes the turn for home. So since Team Oracle won in San Francisco. If you don't remember that. The comeback of 2013 is complete. It was pitted as one of the greatest comebacks in sporting history when Jimmy, Shannon, and the team came back from an eight to one deficit to beat Team New Zealand nine to eight. And in winning the cup, they retained the rights to choose the location. So they chose this year's America's Cup four years later here in Bermuda. And uh, man, just a fantastic team effort. So Shannon, I heard you're big time. We are, we're leaving and we've cleared customs on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Yeah, uh, she was hyped on the fact that your boat's named Falcon and your last name's Falcone. <laughs> you drop the E and she says, oh, you big time. You big time. He's big time. How does this compare to the amount of gear you have to carry in the mountains? It's pretty similar, the amount of gear. I mean, it's three days. Three days, maybe with all the life-saving devices, it's a little more gear. Hey, welcome. Right. Thank you. Can you give us a little walk through the gear on the boat? Okay, starting with the most important, our fresh water. Individual strobes. Yep. The customary flares in the orange bin. One of these, in addition to a personal EPIRB locator beacon. This is our world. <laughs> Out to blue water, bro. Bermuda, sayonara. You've been nice. What's the deal? You put so much time and effort into this thing. It's a beauty. You know, a year ago, Tommy Luffer and I sat down, started conversations in order to build an ocean-going falling boat. That exponential growth in technology you've seen in the Cup, now, as you see here with the F4, has trickled down and jumped into mainstream sailing. The future of the sport is foiling, without a doubt. And it's really hard to go sailing now and not be foiling. I think everyone's going to cross that threshold and not want to go back. As sailors, you don't have to be uh, an America's Cup sailor mm -hmm. to enjoy falling. This is the moment that, you know, it's time to take off. Here we are 
our day one. One hour and 45 minutes after leaving Bermuda. We got a front. It's going to swing around, go northwest, northeasterly, and then we're going to ride 25 knots of lightning straight to uh, some better tasting rum. Conditions change. It's not a playbook. You have to sort of manage whatever is thrown at you with the crew that you have. And that's when sailing at night, navigating, having to deal with not the competition of another competitor, but nature itself, yeah. you know? That's, that's the challenge you have. But the, the strap looks fine. The Bermuda, we left early, about 24 hours ahead of a front that's coming down, knowing that we're gonna hit it to some high pressure. We set up tomorrow for a fast, wild sleigh ride down to Antigua. All right, day one. Solid day of sailing. Yeah, good day. I wonder what the difference between right now today and right now tomorrow is going to be. Oh, shit. Tough day on the open ocean. It's rowdy out here, but someone's got to do it to get this boat down into you. Little speed build. Happy to tickle her up just one degree. Here she comes. Shoulders relaxed. Splendid. There we go. There we go. Nice puff building in three. Perfect moment here. Awesome. Awesome. Nice flat boat. Nice job with the telltales. For a little speed build right there. Low roaster. Two. One. Here it is. And up and out. Pressure in four. Good angle. No danger to come up. No danger. Nice. Hot dog! Hot dog! <laughs> Just cruise the 20, man. This is unreal. This is so fucking good. This is going to just keep happening all day because the breeze is going to keep building, so every knot is going to be one or more of those. My greatest moments in my boat have been winds perfect, yeah. kind of like this, but with bigger sea stains. Yeah. So I'm actually like, boom, bouncing yeah. down, surfing waves. And with this, it's just hovercrafting. Yeah, exactly. The magic carpet. That's what we call it. Last night we were beating in the, I don't know, 10, 10 to 12 knots of wind speed, following a real tight angle, and still doing 10 to 13 knots of wind, sunrise. Life is good. I've tried to bring the cup experience, the Volvo experience, into the systems and simplicity of being able to sail it shorthanded efficiently. Mm -hmm. Really trying to take the time and have it that when other guys that have sailed professionally step on board, they can't really think of what they would change. These guys are pretty serious about getting the design right on this boat. All day analysis of what's working and what could be just a little bit better. Tell these guys take big pride in getting this F4 dialed. Other falling boats right now, if you see 25 knots of breeze, you're debating whether you're leaving the dock. Here on this one, that's when you start to have fun. Got a little canvas up. About ready to take Bronco into third gear. And we're not getting the bow press as much, so she's much freer. Try it like this and see what you think. We've been running the front edge of the low pressure system since about 9.30 a.m. It's blowing about 18 to 20 knots. The sea state has increased, but we're still you know, spiking into the low 20s. I mean, this is what the boat's made for. I've sailed my whole life, and this is seriously made sailing just for sailing fun again. We, uh, we woke up at calm this morning, and we had a full day having the breeze build from really pretty flat seas. Boat handles in incredibly. And it's been such an amazing just, I don't know how to better describe it, except for me it's like tree riding. Monday in the office.
There's Tommy right over there. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, try what you go overboard. First thing that happens is life jacket inflates. Must say survival. Boom. When that inflates, AIS module automatically goes off. What happens? He shows up position-wise on our chart plotter, so we know exactly where he is. We slow the boat down and go back to get him. If we don't come back to get him, his name is called to reach into his pocket, and he's got Eper, which that basically sets off lights on the other side of the world. That sets that off. And that's basically everyone knows that uh, he's lost. And the last one, which is pretty good visual, he's also got his pocket, the strobe. Really, really helpful for us to see it. Because on AIS, we'll have him in position, officially destroyed. So you do not go on deck at night without those things. All in my pocket. Safety first, last and always, safety triangle. That's how we operate. Yep, there we go. <laughs> so, that's it. Good morning. Good morning. Signing off. Good take a shower. See you later. Breeze is coming from the direction we want to go. We're trying to race the sun to get into Antigua before sunset. Well, if it could be done, I got faith that this crew and this vessel can do it. The playlist suddenly switched. Some good music. You can tell we're within 100 miles of Antigua. Yeah, man. The sound is real good. As I think many athletes, I think you get into the sport, you know, I've been in it for like 15 years, and a big part of it for sure was family and having kids. Definitely your perspective on life does change. Going sailing to have fun, I think we lost a lot of that. I, after a decade of cup and competition and so on, you sort of go full circle and remember why you enjoy going sailing, why you want to get out there and disconnect. Like that. That home sweet home. Look at this super yacht city behind you. Yeah. You're gonna be the little guy. All in all, a uh, pretty full on, well rounded thousand miles. The brochure had three days of downwind foiling, and ultimately we had the calm for 24 hours, full on for 24 hours, and upwind all of today. So, yeah, the rest are getting a shakedown and still testing the boat out. Uh, no better way, no better crew. Thank you. We call adventure. From the Falcon, checking out. Cheers. Cheers. Drink rum? Yeah. Two total. Very excited you're back.